So, thank you for having me. And uh, there's been some news, <laughs> and <laughs> we we are as 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 these things go. When, when you go through a process like this, it's quite regulated, it's all very new, it's all very exciting. And uh, as I said, it's quite regulated. And it's very guarded what we can say and what we can't say uh, during this period of time. And, and you could even label it as a bit of a silent period. So as a result, I can't actually say anything for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> and I'm only, only going to stand here. <laughs> Nah, that's not completely true. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start by stating I love this industry. This is an amazing industry to work in. I've, I've, I've spent the last third, over 13 years in mobile games, which was a bizarre choice at the time to start working at, in mobile games. But slowly but surely, my friends and family came, came around and said, hey, maybe you were just that. But this is a great industry uh, to be in. Uh, there's a few reasons why. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to state here some of the most obvious ones. Um, mobile gaming is now the biggest form of gaming entertainment. Uh, this happened last year, so not a small feat. This is an industry that was born this year, 20 years ago, here in Finland. Um, last year, mobile gaming took the helm as, as the biggest form of, en of gaming entertainment, by, measured by consumers' spending. Consumers voting with their wallet for mobile games. Um, in fact, mobile gaming is the, is the fastest growing form of entertainment overall. Uh, let that sink in for a minute. Uh, TV, well, I don't know if anybody watches TV anymore, but uh, TV, uh, box office, etc., everything's dwarfed by the growth of mobile games. Uh, analysts were, are, are predicting a 14% growth rate until 2020. That's all fine, but it looks as though the industry is actually growing far faster than a meager 14% CAGR. Uh, why so? Well, iOS and, and Android mobile gaming revenues grew Q1 year over year over 50%. And AppAni, which I'm sure you all, you all stare at AppAni figures from time to time, uh, AppAni recently said that uh, they believe that the mobile gaming end user generated revenues are going to be at 105 billion in 2020. Uh, sorry, 2021. Now, if these, this is the case, then the industry actually needs to grow far faster than a, again, meager 14%. And I say meager lightly because that's a really fast growth rate in, in all, all, all grand scheme of things. There's a few reasons why. There's this year 2.6 billion smartphones in the hands of consumers worldwide, hopefully in the hands and not in the pockets, playing Rovio games. Um, <laughs> the, the conversion from smartphone user to smartphone gamer is still increasing. We're at, I think, 72% in the US uh, this year, uh, growing to 77% uh, over the next few years, even in a mature market. Uh, players are spending more and more on our craft. Uh, they're voting with their wallets. Mobile games has become a culturally accepted form of entertainment. And lastly, the free-to-play model itself uh, extends uh, the game life cycles. Uh, in the US, if you look at top grossing lists in the US, uh, the top grossing games are on average over three years uh, young or old, however you wanted to label it. But there are a lot of games that are, are, are originate from 2012 in the US top grossing lists. So the life cycle has been completely shaped differently than what was once in premium games. All in all, a great industry. A few words about about the business model, free to play. Um, and here, two of our own examples. Uh, I'm, I, I don't probably need to sell you on the fact that when free to play works well, you can increase your business over time. But it's very striking when you look at uh, two, of, two of Rovio's own examples. Angry Birds Space. Who remembers where Angry Birds Space was launched from? Ah, oh, Chris, you should know this. <laughs> Was it, it was from a space station. So, so some, sometimes these things happen. And uh, to my knowledge, it's the only video game in history ever launched from a space station. Um, quite a meteoric launch. Um, hey, the punch. The, <laughs> the <laughs> I thought that was tumbleweed. Uh, the the um, 
Now, having such a great launch, it still falls over time. That's just how, how premium games work. Whereas free-to-play, when it works well, it looks a bit like Angry Birds 2. Uh, a game that we, well, initially we, we, we tumbled, stumbled a little bit with that game, but we managed to turn it around over time, and we've, we've surpassed our initial uh, revenue spike, and we still believe we have our be best days ahead of us. This is, this is really beautiful. This makes sense. And from a financial point of view, this is also something that, that is way more predictable and stable than premium ever was. So in here, in our wonderful business, you have the art, you have the data, and you have the business all wrapped into one. That's free to play, and it's wonderful. I love it. I also love Rovio. <laughs> it's funny to say that on stage, but I love Rovio, and there's a few reasons why. Um, I believe in our mission. We're here to set the world on fire by crafting the best games and entertainment in the world. Um, who knows what Rovio means? Who knows what Rovio means? Rovio means bonfire. So there's, there's, a, there's a direct correlation there with, 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 uh, with, what, with what we aim to do. We also want to conquer the top grossing charts for years, and we want to grow Angry Birds, and perhaps in the future also some other brands, um, to evergreen entertainment brands. This is, this is our mission and our vision. And to underline, underline this, there's a short video that, that I wanted to show you, show you today of some of the things that we've, we've done over the past few years uh, with Angry Birds and, and with Rovi. And I think the, especially I think the mission statement kind of comes to light by, by, by looking through this, this short video. So let's go. Oh, it starts by the very first animated trailer for Angry Birds, which we spent, let this sink in for a minute, $25,000 on. What? So, here we go. Angry Birds? More like Angry Stan. What's your name? I'm Red. Here's my favorite computer game. Angry Birds fan fiction. And it's a new game I'm calling Heads Up, Angry Birds. Remember Angry Birds? None of us have any memories at all from the year 2009. One level up. Lewis, can I play Angry Birds on your phone? No, you cannot play Angry Birds right now. No. Bird was the word. In Angry Birds Friends. Shoot it! Stop jumping! Aren't they cute? Uh, <laughs> now, if that's not reason enough uh, for me to love the company I work for, there's more. Um, we are now 
what we label as a games first entertainment company. Now, there's the, 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 these are the non data heavy slides. You should see, you should see the data heavy slides. Uh, the, uh, the, the games business accounts for, for about 80% of revenue over the last 12 months, brand licensing about 21%. Uh, we had over the past year, we had five games in the US top 100 grossing charts on iPhone. In fact, last week we had four games in the, in, in, in the top 100 grossing charts in the US. Uh, they were all bird games. So I guess my tip of the day, if you want to succeed in mobile games, stick a bird in it. <laughs> That's not, not the official uh, company. <laughs> But it was fun. Uh, the, 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 what, what, what actually is, 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 is interesting here is that in our games uh, um, audience composition, in our, in our audience focus, uh, we, we have a few different audience profiles we, we target our games development to. And when we look at who's playing our, our, our games, even the games we had in top, top 100 grossing last week, even though they're, yes, they're Angry Birds games, but they're played by in a very simplistic nutshell, adult females and adult males. There's way more interesting data than, ge than gender and, and age. But in a simplistic way, to summarize it, that's who's playing them. So we, we can address uh, both genders, all ages, with the Angry Birds 4 Quadrant brand, which is quite amazing. Um, we're bigger than, and stronger than ever. Uh, at this point in time. Uh, our games business has grown through the years and we're growing faster at this moment in time than we've, we've ever done. Um, the reason behind that fast growth at this moment is last year in 2016, we got our free-to-play KPIs to a level where we could actually start investing at scale in user acquisition. We invested last year about 20 million euros in, in UA and this year it's growing tremendously. Over the past 12 months we've invested 45 and it's, it's, it's skyrocketing as a result of, of LTVs rising. Temu. Uh, our, our head of finance in the games division is going to speak a little bit about the song and dance and holy matrim matrimony between finance and user acquisition. It's going to be an interesting session. So we transitioned our business from, from premium to free to play. 100% uh, of games, is now, games revenue is coming from free games. Uh, the brand licensing business works very well. We've pivot, pivoted the movie uh, business to a licensing model. So we're now, we're now not funding the, the upcoming movie, but we are working in, in good partnership with our, our, our uh, partner Sony Pictures, uh, Columbia TriStar, on, on that movie. Um, Angry Birds. Um, this is a global big brand. Uh, in fact, 97% of, of, of the world knows the brand, um, which, is, which is very unique. This is the number one global brand born from mobile games. It is also the first uh, mobile game to reach over a billion downloads. And we have, as you can see, we have a huge brand awareness and something that was was happened in a tremendously short period of time. It quickly became and a franchise that virtually everyone in the world knows. We have a strong live portfolio, and we also have a very clear uh, strategy for future game development. Our top five games, again, this is the non-data heavy slide, uh, that our, our top five games represented about 80% of our revenues over the past 12 months. Uh, we have 20 games live, but it's really the top we focus on. It's the top of the top, of the top that we run live operations on, and we acquire, acquire use, users through uh, performance marketing means, and the, those are the games that grow over time. Uh, we focus on the here and now in terms of our, in term, in terms of our, our strategy. However, bulk majority of our game development team is actually working on new games. There's 13 games in development at this moment, of which only the very best of the best will ever reach uh, global launch. Five studios, each studio owns a specific genre of games. Each studio has a domain in which they operate. Why so? We believe that the only way to perfect your art is to do it over time and really focus on what you do. And we've chosen each domain, each genre, specifically based on market development based and based on our own strengths. Naturally, we're strong in slingshot games. 
<laughs> well, but this is interesting. This is like this. This is a top-grossing genre now, and we are we we are strong. I can't claim ownership of sling, slingshot games, but I just don't know very many other slingshot games than ours. Um, the, we we've, we've grown very strong in match puzzle games. We have a few of those on the market. Latest game, Angry Birds Match, was launched about three weeks ago. You should all download it. Uh, battle games, Battle Bay came out in May. That's the first endeavor in this space. Uh, Real-time PvP seems to all of a sudden be the thing, and we happen to have a game in development that went out just when it is a thing. Um, now we have also two, two new games uh, developing there. RPGs are worked on in Stockholm, uh, massively multiplayer online mobile games, non Angry Birds games in our London studio, which we're ramping up and started this year. So in, in a nutshell, we have, in terms of the craft, we have a lot of interesting things going on. And I think that there's uh, positions pretty much in all studios. And here it's a little bit of a plug. If you're interested, let us know. There's certainly a lot of very nice things to do at Rovio. Um, Furthermore, our games as a service model, uh, how we operate, it works. It, it creates eventually dig digital hobbies out of our games. And here we're showing uh, AB2 together with the DAU development. So we really managed to, to scale up the business while maintaining a fairly stable DAU. Um, hopefully, if, if GDC approves, there's going to be a very deep dive into how we actually did this in, 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 in the springs, in this coming springs. Uh, GDC. So, Chris, can you help? Sure, thanks. GDC, you mean? Sorry, I think you've got it wrong. We, we should do it here. <laughs> um, our free to play expertise is paying off. Um, we have a growing number of, of, of paying fans, paying customers. Uh, our, our monthly average revenue per paying user has increased quite tremendously over the past few years. Uh, on average, across the portfolio, uh, users pay over 30 euros uh, per, per person, or paying users, pay, paying customers pay over 30 euros per person. And as a result, our in-app revenue is growing, uh, growing quite nicely. And, and this is really off the back of, of, of user acquisition and focused on the here and now and improving KPIs. On top of that, which I'm not showing on the slide, uh, we naturally also run ads in our, in our games. That's about 15% of top line, between 2 and 3 million euros a month. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, this is only here because it looks like a hockey stick. Uh, I, I, I love hockey sticks. Um, but this is the games business quarter by quarter growth. As you can see, the, the red uh, bars, they represent the top five. Uh, so it's really the top five that is growing uh, over time. And that's really where the strategy is, the current games. Whereas whenever we release a new game, it's tremendously important for us. All right. So the million dollar question. What have we learned so far from this process we're in, and potentially then becoming a listed company in the future? So, number one, suits, both in our corridors and in our closets. That was a surprising learning. Look at me, I, what is this? Um, <laughs> and secondly, Slides have become A4 format. <laughs> They're friendly printer format now. <laughs> Our stage jokes are scripted to the finest detail. <laughs> Insert laughter here. <laughs> and lastly, ah, everything aside, uh, what, what we really have learned and what we, what we really want to underline is, is that this is a process, it's something we go through, and hopefully it results in a positive outcome. However, uh, we have our own culture. We are, we are Rovio, and we will remain Rovio despite uh, the process we go through. We will remain an internally very transparent organization. We've done really, I think, really good choices in terms of how, how we approach data moving forward, uh, and, and learning from each other has always uh, has always been very important for for game development and very important for Rovio, and that will remain a very very important aspect of our of our company moving forward. So, with that, thank you, and feel free to get in contact.